All right, coaches, thank you for joining me tonight. We're going to be talking live, a little coaching football tonight. We were talking about how to set up the timing in your run game. How do you get the timing straight in your run game so that your running back is hitting the line of scrimmage when you want him to, when you want him to get there, uh, so that you're not uh, leaving your offensive line blocking too long. So that's what we're talking about. Going to be going live here in just a second. Uh, if you uh, have questions, you can post them in wherever you're looking at. And also remember to like and share this video if you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started uh, talking a little run game tonight, talking a little offensive line. Okay, so the first thing to talk about here is why does this matter? You know, why when we're talking about your run, your your offensive playbook and your run game and all the things that you do in your offense, why do we why are we singling out the timing on your run plays as being so important? You know, we always talk about you look in playbooks, it's always about the blocking scheme, you know. We gotta block this guy and block this guy. We gotta have the running back getting here. Here's the hole he's supposed to hit, here's where he's supposed to go. But you don't talk that much about timing until you don't have it. When you don't have timing, that's when you know you've got to talk about it, when you've got to look at it. So I, this is something you need to be prepared to address as you start the season or as you start, whether it's off-season workouts or you start to install or you try to install a new play during the season even, um, which hopefully you're not doing a lot of, but uh, you know, you've know you got your system and you work your system. But um, as you put in a new play, it's important to not just look at, you know, are the offensive linemen blocking the right guy? Is the running back taking the right steps? Is the quarterback taking the right steps? But then we've got to take a look at, is everything meshing together? Is the, is the blocking of the offensive line, and I think this gets left out by a lot of coaching, is the, or coaches, is the blocking of the offensive line meshing with the, um, the footwork of the running back. And here's why this matters. Here's why timing is so important, so incredibly important. It matters because if your timing is wrong, if your timing is off uh, on your blocking, then you are going to end up with, um, you are going to end up with your running back getting the football and looking to make his cut and your offensive line being engaged in blocks for too long. You want to make the job of your offensive lineman as easy as possible by limiting the amount of time that they spend engaged in a block. And of course, we do this with our passing game, right? Quick game, three-step drop, five-step drop. Um, we want it to, to be uh, you know, balls out in, in 1.3 or 1.8. We don't want our offensive line protecting for four seconds. You know, that's, that's what makes... Um, of course, we work on them. We want them to be able to protect that long, uh, but that's what makes seven on seven so unrealistic is that they get four seconds to get open and find a, you know, to make a throw. And, and your offensive line is not going to be really good at protecting for that amount of time. And so that's why, um, you know, it's seen more in your passing game. I want to talk about it in our run game. Whether you're running uh, inside zone, outside zone, power, counter, whether you're running a wing T uh, and, and wing T and double wing, this is one of the beauties. Uh, and, and, and I'll include like a, a, a triple option, split back beer, flex bone option. These offenses do a fantastic job of hitting when run correctly, do a fantastic job of hitting the line of scrimmage fast. So we talk wing T, double wing, um, even single wing to an extent, uh, although it depends on what's happening, which part of the single wing they're running. Um, but you know, they hit fast. That's why I love like an inside trap because it hits fast and no offensive lineman needs to be engaged in a block very long. So the critical part of your timing is are you getting your offensive lineman in a position where they have to block for the least necessary amount of time or least amount of time necessary to stay engaged in a block. So how timing works is and that's why timing is important that's why we're going to talk about it here so how timing works we go over to the board here um what we're looking at with timing pen got stuck what we're looking at with timing is when we run a play does this thing hit hello toby uh when, does this thing hit fast does it hit fast enough um 
to, to be effective for us or is it going to take too long? Is it going to take, are we going to leave, you know, a 15 year old offensive lineman engage in a block for a second too long against some senior division one recruit? Like that's, that's why timing is important is because we can't do that to him. Uh, so let's take a look at just a simple power here. Um, this is what we teach in our pistol power offense system. Probably our base play in the system. It doesn't have to be your base play. In fact, you know, it's become less and less of a base for us um, over time. And let's get a defense drawn up here. And we'll just go with the 425. Four 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 two five, something all of us see. All right, so if we're looking at power, our basic power, it's a good one because there's a really nice visual example here uh, of where we want to get to. And we're going to bring him inside, block the A-gap area. We would motion the H back across and kick out. Now the key here is that that kick out is a hard block. Okay, the kick out is a hard block, um, and the wrap is where we want to be right off of it. So as we run this play, as we get our backside line, our backside guard wrapping to the play side linebacker, the kick out and the wrap, you know, those are especially the, the double team is one thing, you know, we should be able to get on a double team. We should be able to stay engaged in that double team for a little while. Um, but when we talk about the kick and the wrap, these need to happen with the back right there. Um, and we'll often get our H back. He gets, he gets too tight in here. And I want it to be a kick out. I want it to be very much like we used to run what we called outside trap, um, which is more like buck sweep, um, where we pulled the, Front side guard, kick out, backside guard, wrap, and it, you know, basically buck sweep type of thing. And I want where the H back is coming from to look more like that, and this is something I've kind of evolved, than where he's standing here behind the tackle and kicking that guy out because it's how I can minimize the amount of time with still getting the deception I want in the backfield because I like a counter step and the quarterback to reverse pivot and they are to come across. We're using this counter step because it gives a different look to the linebackers from our zone. Um, and I like to have the same step uh, on, the, on the first step of every running play that we have. So that first step is going to look like now that we're running it to the left, when in reality we're coming, you know, we're just counter stepping and coming back. So that counter step, which is part of our timing, we'll talk about in a minute. And he's going to take that. And the key here, quarterback will, will boot out. I want him to get this football and he, he's going to take the handoff just to the right of center. So off of our counter step and our reverse pivot, he's going to take that handoff just to the right of center. Uh, and I appreciate you guys being here. If you have, con uh, you know, we are live. If you have questions or anything, you can go ahead and post them. Uh, and I will uh, post them in the chat, post them in the comments, and I will go around to those at the end and, and answer whatever I can. Um, it's kind of in different places right now, so I'll have to pull them together. But as he comes across, He's going to take this handoff right around just to the right of center. And I want it to be just as that guard is getting to that point so that we can follow, not have to fly, but that we can follow. And as that kick happens, he's following the guard and it essentially becomes an isolation play. It essentially becomes your ISO, your lead play, where that guard is really leading for him. So that counter step that we use not only gives some deception to the backfield, but it also sets us up so that as we take the handoff, we're following in behind the guard coming from the backside and setting up the isolation. When you run an I formation ISO play, there's no timing, right? He's already behind him. He's running downhill, boom, downhill. We take the handoff. The timing is perfect on that play most of the time, as long as you don't have your back too deep. If you have your back too deep, then you're going to force the isolation block to happen early. You're going to force these guys to get in there um, and stay on their blocks too long. And it's just going to cause some problems there. So um, what we're going to do is basically set it up so that we take this handoff 
and get in behind that guard. So that's the goal uh, of the play that we're going to, uh, of what we're going to do with our timing. So how do we adjust that timing, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. We adjust it by depth. We adjust it by the length of his counter step, the type of counter step. Uh, we can also adjust it by his alignment. There's a alignment. There's a lot of different things that we can do. If I look at another one, let's erase some things here. Bring this board up. And this is just PowerPoint. So I usually get that question. Um, I'm just using PowerPoint, nothing special. If, we go, if we're going to run a outside zone play, a stretch play, okay, we're going to use our zone count. And I teach all of this in our Pistol Power Offense system that you can check out um, at pistolpoweroffense.com. You can get full access to the entire system. Very inexpensive uh, at a monthly rate. Cancel any time, no contract. You can check it out and go to pistolpoweroffense.com. We run the system. We haven't been in pistol or in shotgun all season yet this year. We just installed power in the second week of the season. So, uh, or the second week of camp. So, uh, it, it's, we are zone, uh, zone stretch, power, counter, uh, toss, uh, trap is the basics of the offense, but it's all about coach simple, play fast, win. So you can check that out there. Um, we're going to use our zone count system here. So this would be our zero, one, two, and all the details of the count are in the system. Zero's for the center, one's for the guard, two's for the tackles, and three is the guy for the H and Y. And then we use cover uncomfort principles to figure out who's going to get who. So right now, and I'm just doing this real quick, I'm not trying to teach stretch blocking right now. Um, we would be looking to get the reach here. We would be looking to get the reach here. And a little punch. Getting the reach there. We would be trying to get our reach to the nose, and we're only using 18 inch splits, so this isn't very far. So the timing comes in with our uncovered guys. So what we teach, we teach our R, he's gonna be reading the end man, okay? So as he steps, he's taking one, two, three steps. As he takes those one, two, three steps, He's, he's looking at that end man line scrimmage. That's his first read. He goes one, two, three. On the third step, I want him to make that read. Okay, so on the third step, he's going to make that read. Where the timing comes in now is if our uncovered lineman, and take the center as an example here, okay, he's going to be taking that reach one, two, three, and he's going to decide now, am I able to overtake the tackle? Uh, and if I am overtake the tackle, I'm going to bump him off. And if I can get to the tackle on the third step, I bump him off and we climb to backer. If I can't get there on the third step, then I turn up uh, and, and, and go. And the way that this works with our timing is on the third step, the R is making his decision. On the third step, the uncovered lineman is making his decision. And then we turn it up, okay, wherever we're going to be. So let's say that this defensive end stayed outside. He's going to turn it up and we're able to reach this tackle. We turn it up, and again, this becomes that isolation play that we want. Quarterback, no reverse pivot here. Uh, he would boot away on that. Okay, so uh, that's what we're looking for out of that play, and the key to the timing is one, two, three, and the linemen taking their one, two, three, and that once we make that decision, Four five should be hitting the line of scrimmage. That's, that four five are going to press the line of scrimmage. They're going to press the uh, heels of the offensive lineman on the four five, and then we're committing and we're cramming this football and we're going. And so it's going to create again that isolation. So we talk about isolation and inside trap. You know, if you run an inside trap from six yards deep, it doesn't work, uh, not as well as it should. You run an inside trap with a fullback who's at four. You run an inside trap with the fullback who's at three and a half, four yards. You don't run inside trap with a, with a tailback at six yards. It doesn't work uh, unless you've got something else going on there. What we want to happen is for the same thing that happens on the inside trap from four, where we hit the line of scrimmage and he follows that guard that's, that's kicking out right up in there. The same thing that happens on the isolation play where I've got a fullback at three and a half and I've got a tailback at five behind him, uh, five and a half, and they hit the line of scrimmage one behind the other and as the kickout block happens 
where he's reading off the kick out block and breaking away immediately. That same timing, I want to happen on all run plays. The only exception being something like a reverse. And even then, if you've got any block back on the reverse, you want that to time up with your reverse itself. So that's what we talk about when we're talking about running back timing. When you look at your plays, and especially when you first install a play, you're going to have to be looking at this. I always get the questions of how deep is your running back? How long is the counter step? How, you know, what, uh, this is stuff you have to figure out because if I have a running back who is a 4-3 kid, who's a burst, fast, explosive, and then I have another running back who is a 4-9 power back, they're not going to have the same depth. They're not going to have the same footwork possibly. They're, it's not going to be the same. And from play to play, depending on what my base play is, I'm going to set up the depth of my running back for my base play, and then I will adjust him for secondary plays. So if I've got something, whatever your base play is, you know, to me, your base play, you're running 15, 18, 20 times a game, maybe more, and your, your counters off of that, your secondary uh, plays, all of those things, they're not going to have the same uh, timing. They're not going to have the exact same timing. So what do we do to adjust the timing of the back? Well, the simplest one is to move him forward or back. If you move him too far forward, sometimes that can mess with some of your, uh, you know, your quarterback footwork and your boots and things like that. Uh, so that's something to look into. You may need to adjust his timing and his footwork. Um, a second thing to do, uh, and depth is easy. You know, we start out probably six yards. Um, the old NFL inside zone, and I think this is why inside zone may not be as big as it used to be. Maybe one of the reasons. Um, the old inside zone was the slow, slow then go, and, and the blocks were being set up, uh, and teams are not being set up as much, and they're handling the inside zone blocks better. Uh, and it's take, it takes a long time if you do it that way. I'd rather run the inside zone, move my guy up, and, and end up not hitting the cutback lane as much, cram, but cramming a lot more three yard, four yard gains on the inside zone because he's, you know, he's hitting it faster and he's hitting it with my offensive lineman still engaged in the block before they get beat because they're having to hold the block for two and a half seconds. Um, so, you know, rather than being at seven, seven and a half that I've seen some people do and some of our backs have lined up at like nine, um, being at six. I also like six for the power counter. But again, that's with our backs and we will adjust them. Uh, we'll move them where we need to go, where we need to be, so that we are hitting this thing at the right time. Um, the second way to adjust them is by their footwork. Uh, you can lengthen the time, for example, on the counter step. I can make the counter a counter uh, a step and, and um, pause. I can, I can have him pause and hold for a second. I can have him take a second step. Uh, we've used, instead of just the straight one step, we've used a counter shuffle and then coming back with the crossover step. Um, and that's for counter. Uh, it's the same thing in inside zone. If I'm playing him at six and it's too tight, let's just say six, for example. If I'm playing him at six and it's too close to the line of scrimmage, then what I'll do with him is just have him take a counter step, or not a counter step, a timing step, which would just be a lateral step. You know, take, take your second that you need, step, thousand one, and then bam, coming downhill at the hip of the guard. Um, same thing on the stretch. Now stretch, you got to hit a little bit faster, but stretch, we're going to drop step slightly so that we get the angle and so that we get the timing right and we'll have to adjust the depth. Uh, and again, you'll adjust the depth, whichever one is the one that you run the most and then adjust the timing. Um, but you're going to have to get each back to adjust individually to, to hit it correctly. What you don't want to do is adjust the quarterback footwork because you know, if, if the quarterback is the same every time and each back has slightly different footwork, as long as we mesh up and get to the mesh the same every time, then it doesn't matter. We'll be just fine. Um, and then the last thing that you can do is you can adjust the alignment. Uh, so one of the things that I could do, for example, in this play, is that I could adjust the alignment of the back in order to slow him down. Uh, and this works well one of the things that I like to do to give our um, to give our R a little our, our running back or our R a little better vision, a little better angle, and keep him out of the quarterback's way in the um, in the um, passing game 
is to move him slightly off center. And it's very hard to pick up on, but also you can make it even harder to pick up on if you don't always do it. So we might say, hey, for stretch, we're getting there just a little bit fast. And so what we're gonna do with you is move you just slightly off the center line. Move you just slightly off the center line now. And we may have to adjust some footwork with it. Okay. And by that, putting you in a better position for pass protection, uh, and you may not always be there, but I'm going to have a running play where you're off center as well, if I want to do this. Uh, by moving you slightly off of the center line, and, and I really don't, if, even if you just want to move him slightly off the center line, it's probably not ever going to get noticed by most people, by most uh, players. Coaches will notice it, and the players on the field will not notice it as often. Um, but you move him slightly off the center line, and then you use it to adjust your timing to slow him down a little bit, or to move him towards the center line, uh, where you can speed him up a little bit if you need to. Uh, get him going downhill faster. So those are ways, uh, by adjusting the depth, adjusting the alignment, and adjusting the footwork, that you can get your guy uh, into position a little bit faster um, and, and give him a chance to make some plays. So if you have any questions, uh, I'll hang out for just a minute. Uh, my chat box is giving me a little problem, but not surprising. Uh, and I do appreciate you guys if you enjoy it to like and share. Uh, it really does help to get the word out uh, with the um, for the channel and, and just gets me to keep doing more videos. So I'm going to take one second here to pull up some check some places and I'll be here for a couple minutes. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Um, is there a way to give the H by, uh, I guess, I think it's Daryl. Um, is there a way to give the H back the ball more from handoffs, not pass to the H back, let him run the ball. So we run two, two plays with the H back. Um, number one is the H trap. It takes a little longer, but it's because we're using our H trap as a counter. Um, but you can adjust the alignment. So we have a, um, I adjust his alignment just slightly here. So I will use this. Go ahead. Let me go ahead and remove the R to get him back on center. And I can motion him or I can just align him. But you can definitely move the H back. Um, and it depends year to year, you know, who our H back is, how much he's going to get the football. Uh, we use the H trap as a counter off of the truck toss. Now that's got some setup involved to it, so it doesn't have to hit as fast. Um, but it's basically... Something like that. Quarterback reverse pivot. Run like that. Um, that's one of the things in our pistol power offense system. Um, that's probably the base way that we get the ball to the H back every year. Uh, in some years, that's been like one of our best running plays, especially when obviously when truck toss is better. Uh, the other one that I really like is again off of the truck toss series, and I'll show you. I can get, I can get the ball to him in a lot of ways, but I really like putting him in an orbit motion. And giving him the toss. If I've got a dynamic H back. We're going to do this. So 
something like that. With a dynamic H back, I'm absolutely going to do that. Okay. Um, but I can adjust his alignment. As I said, I can move his alignment around. Uh, I've given him the football on outside zone. Um, I've definitely given him the football on jet sweep, just using the stretch blocking. Uh, put him from right, put him from a H1, uh, from a one or a four alignment, which are slot alignments, uh, and giving him the jet sweep. I have also, you'll notice that we are not, we are under center like 90% of the time now. So I'm drawing our pistol power offense under center because it doesn't matter where you put the quarterback. He can be under center, he can be anywhere. Um, I was going to adjust his alignment and yeah, he basically become a two back set. He can also take the reverse too. And I've put him in a, I mean, I've put him in a, a far near set. I've also put him in a more out of the pistol with the quarterback here, but put him in a position where he can run the stretch. Player the back away or lead the back or whatever you want. So lots of different things you can do. Uh, Tyler says, do you have an opinion on pistol read option? I like it. We ran it last year. Um, our JVs ran a lot of it. Um, and it was good because they didn't block a lot of people. So we needed to read them. Um, they got better. But originally, or initially they were not. Um, and our varsity ran it for a while. but struggled with it. Uh, it just wasn't, it didn't fit what we had. We, we misevaluated personnel um so i like it though i love it we did we were doing rpos and everything it was pretty cool funny thing is we were doing the rpo thing we never told our receivers that the rpo was basically out so they kept bubbling and teams kept covering it just it was great and then when we'd see them cover it cover it cover it and then finally they'd stop we throw we we'd call the bubble um reaching the three tech is a hard block yes down block on three with a tackle and pull the guard. Pin and pull, fine. I mean, yeah, no problem. We're only 18 inch splits though. I don't think reaching the three tech is that hard for us. Because he's gonna get help from the guard. Like if we're in this front. Um, well, I don't, I don't find reaching the three tech hard at all for the, for the guard. I want the center to get to him. Uh, but if you wanna pin and pull it, that's fine. It works too. I just don't wanna overcomplicate our blocking scheme. Um, there's nothing wrong with it at all. And I'll just... Just about wrapped up here. Guys, if you have anything else posted, I'll be on here for about another two minutes, probably. Uh, and I'll answer your questions. If you've got them. If you've enjoyed this, guys, if you feel like you've gotten something out of it, I greatly appreciate it. Like and share this. Uh, let let um, other coaches know about it. It really helps out. It really helps uh, to expand my reach podcast. Also, check out the Football Coaching Podcast. Uh, and as I mentioned, I've got the Pistol Power Offense system. You can get the Pistol Power Offense system at pistolpoweroffense.com. Also, if you uh, want... Offense, defense, special teams, everything. You want JDFB Insider. JDFB Insider is going to give you access to five complete coaching systems, including the Pistol Power Offense system, which is a massive uh, system for, for coaching your offense. Uh, but then you'll also get access to all my defensive systems, 4-3, 4-2-5, uh, um, which is the same as a 4-4, 3-4 uh, defense, and then also the 33 stack defensive system are all included. You can get that by going to joedanielfootball.com and clicking on the join button up at the top. So uh, check those out. And as you guys go into the season, I wish you the best of luck. I appreciate you being on here tonight on a Thursday night at 930 at night. Hope you got some good ideas. Hope you got some things that will help your football team this season as you get started. Hope you guys have a great evening. Please remember to like and share if you enjoyed it. And remember, Coach Simple, play fast, win.